Right, hello. Uh, welcome to Pixel Tavern's uh, Pub Talk. This is our first podcast. It's going to be our introductory one. And uh, we're just going to sort of introduce ourselves and tell you about what we're going to be doing. Uh, so I'm Phil. Um, my favourite series is Zelda and Smash Bros. So I'm going to be mostly the Nintendo person. And uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to Nick for it's very good. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm more of the Sony guy. Yeah. Um, my favourite games are Resident Evil and Metal Gear Solid, as well as Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, Uncharted, and so on. I've yeah. got too many good favourite games. <laughs> I'm James. Um, I'm the PC guy. So I'm more, <laughs> I'm more uh, like Fallout, Batman, GTA, and kind of Minecraft and various things like that. And I'm Kurt. I'm Kurt, and I'm a jack of all trades. Because I Ooh, play on every console, bitch. apart from the Xbox One, because uh, all the games come out on PC, so I play them on PC. That is very true. <laughs> just, just, just to point out as well. Or it's the loose cannon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows. We, we, all, we all do play pretty much everything. Uh, I just can't Peden's afford everything. more PC than any consoles, really. <laughs> I can't afford everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've got PS4 and a Wii U and a PC. Uh, Kurt, you've got, you've got the same, haven't you? Uh, I've got PC, PS4, PS3, Wii U... Uh, I can't be bothered to count the handheld, handhelds. Got Wii somewhere, <laughs> getting to cover in dust. But then again, I use my PC to run Dolphin emulators, so yeah, I don't know. That's true. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all my consoles. <laughs> well, we've but... all got more consoles than we're <laughs> listing, but <laughs> yeah. what's your main ones? My main ones I use at the moment my PS4 and my Wii U. Nice. And uh, Peden, your... I think you're just PC, aren't you? I got a PC and I've got like a PS3 and Xbox 360. But nothing particularly yeah. <laughs> other than my PC. Again, probably because games. most of the games on 360 come out on PC. Yes. So yeah, um, so yeah we're kind of just going to go through what we are planning to do with the channel. So Nick, do you want to take us through the uh, real life thing? Uh, okay, so our main series we're going to be doing, well, our big one, our big production one is uh, real life, uh, which is essentially taking a video game and adapting it into real life. Uh, so we take the gameplay elements, the story elements, and we combine it into its own live action thing. Um, so the first one we're doing is Resident Evil, um, and then we're going from there, really. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially real life is basically games in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that what it says on the title? <laughs> we've got uh, we've got a few game, games in mind. I was thinking of uh, potentially doing Shenmue, which not many people know what it is, ah, but with, with Sony announcing it at their conference the other year, it'd be a bit more well known. But uh, thinking of doing Q2Es in real life, that'd be quite fun. I've got um, Tekken planned um, with my friend who's coming down, who's a martial artist. He wants to come down and help with that. So that'd be a good one for you to get involved with as well, Phil. Yeah. Um, and some then, crazy kicks. Yeah, because we um, we try to. I'm trying to bring in interactive elements as well. So it's not just it's not an interactive game, but say for example, uh, uh, for the Resident Evil, you will choose your character and you choose which story you want to go on. The same with the tech, and you would choose which characters you want to fight. So there's a little tiny bit of interactivity there, but essentially you are sitting back and watching your favorite games, but in live action. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was thinking of like if if we ever get around to like a Star Fox one, it could be the whole level system of when you finish when you finish one video, you get to pick which route you take next to see the next level. But that would be like sort of further down the line. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but yeah ben, do you want to take us through our um, the first first game we're going to be playing, all four of us? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so basically, we'll be doing some random kind of let's plays. Ideally, anything we can do together across internet because obviously I, I live a bit yeah. further away. Uh, We're all quite far apart really. <laughs> yeah, um, so Borderlands 2 and probably pre-sequel if you can are we sort of the first two we're looking at. Yeah, um, Beaton's definitely the uh, expert on Borderlands 2. <laughs> <laughs> haven't done 200 hours, we you talking about? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so just sort of general kind of shenanigans and Borderlands and things because that's quite a fun four-player game and it's quite easy to well, quite easy to make funny to be honest. <laughs> can I draw on it? If you troll, I'm gonna leave you behind. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Nick, Nick is our uh, re resident troll in games. Uh, I'll, pull out, like, I'll pull out my level 80 and I'll just be like, screw you. Like, uh, we'll, we'll be playing a Mario Party 10 at some point, and we all know Nick is 
going to be Bowser pretty much every time. And he's yeah. got his own special laugh for it. That, uh, I'm sure everyone will enjoy when it happens. I do love being a dick. I'm a nice guy in real life. I just like being a dick. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> really? what, what else? Like, we were playing um, Runbo on the Wii U. I'm not sure if you've heard of this game. No. But it's basically a platformer where you race to the end of the level. Okay. But there's a mode on the Wii U where there's someone on the gamepad who basically just has to try and stop him. Oh, uh, it's like um, Mario Maker. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you'd, you'd try, you try to marry you to complete a level, but you get the god character who was just going. Oh now yeah, here's yeah. a wall. <laughs> no, that was uh, that was uh, in New Super Mario Bros. U, yeah. where you could place platforms wherever you wanted. And I remember doing that once with Nick, and it is literally <laughs> just that player constantly tapping the screen, so you can't move forward, and it's, it's like, horrible to play. <laughs> it's the best game ever. <laughs> Like if you're if you're the god character, <laughs> <laughs> we're also going to play a bit of a uh, tower fall on PS4, which uh, Mina and Kurt have played a lot of in the past. I think Pin, you said you played Tower Fall as well. A bit, you? Yeah, been a while. That's a great game. Um, great tower fall, it's good. And we had something else lined up, didn't we? It's on Wii U, I think. We had Mario Party 10 and something else. Uh, I, don't, I can't no, remember. I can't remember. But yeah, we've got some games. In yeah, mind. <laughs> something to do with all four of us. Then it'd be nice to get all four of us together as a space of splitting apart that like we will be on other series. So. Yeah. But, um, unfortunately, Pins lives in Oxford, all the way away from Bristol. So he's going to be doing, he's doing all the uh, sort of logos and the banner and everything for the channel. Yeah, a bit more is, behind uh, the scenes and kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, whenever we can get him down here, he'll be involved and he'll be involved with all the Borderlands 2 stuff whenever we play online. If you yeah. see something purdy, it's usually Peden. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> apart, apart from Nick's face, of course. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I did. I did what I could. That's what <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we. Uh, I guess we can kind of move on to the next part of the podcast. Then that's kind of all the introduction Ooh, we need. What Nick's scary corner? Oh, and uh, Nick's scary corner. You want to take us through that, all Nick? Right. Nick's scary corner is not going to be the actual name. <laughs> I, I, I think it works, but <laughs> I like the two famous uh, Essentially, it's me uh, playing scary games where Phil and Peter or whoever is going to be with us is going to commentate in the background. I won't know what they're saying. <laughs> I'm just going to have a headset on and I'm going to go through the game like I normally would because I need the atmosphere while those two do what they need to do. But we're going to make this little storyline where... Uh, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Uh, I get kidnapped and I'm in a torture chamber and they're torturing <laughs> me with video games. So they're trying to... Uh, oh, you poor soul. <laughs> they're trying to find the worst games for me to play because at the end, I'm a massive pussy and I can't play scary games. <laughs> Literally, give you an I example. my head off over the littlest thing. So these guys are going to try and make me shit myself. To give you an <laughs> example of how bad he is with scary games, uh, E3 was about a week ago and uh, they, as everyone knows, they announced Resident Evil 7. When that trailer came on, Nick just had his eyes covered for the entire thing. And he was like, oh, oh, I can't watch it, I can't watch it. And then the logo came at the end and was like, oh, it's Resident Evil, oh, I can't wait. It, it, it's <laughs> kind of ironic because Resident Evils are my favorite games. Yeah, but that's true. I can't play through horror games. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, to be fair, are they even... I mean, when was the last time Resident Evil was actually scary? I suppose Revelations 1 was was scary at some point. But I don't think the last time it's been that scary uh, is probably Remake. I would have thought. Oh, Zero's. yeah. Zero has the Leech Man, which I hate, but... Um, the remake is probably the, the last game I couldn't it took me a while to be able to pick up and work my way through it hmm. Ben, so. you got any uh, scary scary games in mind for Nick? what's it called? I think it's The, the Forest oh yeah, yeah I remember you and mentioned that's, that that's uh, pretty brutal that's all I'm really going to say about that because I'm sure people <laughs> know what it is but Nick doesn't which is <laughs> I was looking at videos what's that um, the game where you're in like a kind of scientific facility and then like this experiment breaks out and then it's got like the gingerbread man <laughs> and he kind of like it basically a light goes off and then he just appears in oh, Freddy um, constantly for Freddy oh, yeah I think I know what it means I, I think you've played Freddy's? this before haven't you oh no Five Night Freddy is the, uh, the animatronics so. okay. yeah. that's the whole yeah. light thing as well yeah well, that's the one with the bears and stuff but like yeah, yeah this yeah, but it's like a light will go off and it's experiment get breaks you so it's just like it's like a gingerbread man or something and literally just keeps appearing in front of you I think I played it years ago yeah, I think I, I think uh, I remember what that is but... we'll probably do Slenderman, yeah. probably a good one. But, uh, Slender, we, we, I, I've got the arrival, but I haven't actually been able to play it yet. So. Okay, <laughs> that's probably a good thing. We've uh, <laughs> also got planned as well, as uh, as long as Nick gets it. Uh, 
Nick's scary corner VR, which will be a uh, uh, fun. Uh, <laughs> I love that one. We, uh, I am getting VR. I yeah, day one. I mean, you, yeah. you're getting it pretty much with Resident Evil Seven now, aren't you? Maybe we could take, we could take turns on that. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, VR sure for breaking that one. It's, he's gonna he's gonna have fun with that. He's, you're not gonna be able to take that for long. Don't have nightmares. You you have actually made us stop recording in the past when when we've done a like attempt something scary corner. <laughs> Kurt, how are you at scary games? Uh, what was I that? Sorry. Really? No, because I don't. I find it hard to gauge if they're scary, so I kind of just. It's hard for me to recommend anything to Nick because he might not find it scary, but like kind of psychological stuff, so things like Silent Hill, things like that. So yeah, I don't know if that would uh, translate to uh, Nick being scared or just creeped out. Oh, it's very easy for me to get a freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome well, to the family, side. Well, I, I used to have, uh, basically, I, when I was at uh, uni, uh, this is when the, uh, the gold edition of Resident Evil 5 came out. And they had the, the Mansion DLC, was it Lost in Nightmares, where uh, you're yeah. Jill and Chris and you go through the Spencer Mansion. Well, not the Spencer Mansion from uh, number one, but his new mansion where uh, Spencer gets taken out by Wesker. Anyway, you go in and it's, it's basically, it's, it's pretty scary. Like, it's a pretty good game because like, the monsters spawn in different directions, so they're never in the same place. So me and my friend, uh, we play for on every difficulty. And literally, we create an echo down the corridor because as soon as something comes out, I would scream my head off, and my scream would make her scream. So literally, yeah. it was just this massive echo, and I, we used to keep people up like all night. It was awesome. I do remember playing that DLC actually. It was really good because it took took away everything that you'd kind of gotten used to in the newer Resident Evils, and just went, yeah, you're gonna go pretty much back to the old ones, and mm. we're gonna we're gonna force you into it. Well, was that DLC what made them uh, pretty much uh, start making revelations? Yeah, that's true. It's like the best thing, I thought the best thing about the new Resident Evils, which they kind of lost in Resident Evil 5 and what I've played of 6, is just lack of ammo. That's what made it more, like Resident Evil 4, okay, after a while you did just end up like a walking tank, but mm -hmm. at a lot of points you were kind of like, oh god, I've only got like five shots left and I've got ages before I'll find any ammo. Like, that's what made it good, but... It's because of your partner. Yeah. You've got a partner to help you, right? that's what system. takes away everything, really, but... I thought when they brought out Resident Evil 5, like when they announced that, it, it's like, oh, you're going to have a partner. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine, as long as I can play it by myself still. And it's like, you kind of can't. If you try playing it by yourself, she keeps getting killed. And it's like, oh. They fixed that in 6, but. <laughs> yeah, they can't. Don't get me on a coming. conversation about 6, because I'll defend that game so bad. <laughs> I've actually bought it now, so I will be playing through that soon. <laughs> That'll be a discussion for another I got time. it on PC, I'll have it in like, you know, 1080p, high, whatever frames per second Resident Evil 6 runs in on PC. <laughs> 60 frames, Phil. 60 okay. frames. Oh yeah, I can't wait, Kurt. Actually, I think it might can be I put it in like 20. 90 frames? I don't know, I think you can, to be honest, you can just whack off the view sync and I think you can just run as high as you want. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, right, was, was there anything we wanted to go through before we went on to E3? No, I think that's about yeah, it, isn't it. Cool. So uh, we will move on to E3 then. So this is the first time we've all been able to meet and talk about it. It was... I would say, like, my opinion, overall, it was a good E3, but it was slightly an under underwhelming one. It didn't feel as big as a normal E3 would. I mean, I know Nintendo only showed off, like, two games, although both of them were really good games. They they needed more, and even though Sony and Xbox's conferences were good, I feel there wasn't really much after them. It normally feels like there's a lot more after the conferences, but... Yeah, it's, it's... It was a weird one, because, um... I think because a lot of them started early, so like the Bethesda and the EA were on the Sunday, so that Monday, the initial one, didn't feel like a full day. It kind of just felt like Xbox, and then you had to wait ages for Ubisoft. Mm. So, and then there was nothing, except for Sony, so there was nothing big announced at the other ones. They kind of, no, uh, they, they kind of just announced their, like we knew there was going to be a Gears of War, we knew there was going to be, we knew about the Rare game and stuff like yeah. that. Microsoft, but Microsoft seemed to be more focused on announcing their new consoles, which is fair enough, than <clears throat> going into the games like they did before. Whereas Sony literally showed everyone their plans for the next couple of years, yeah. like, which where all the standout like the standout announcements were really. But yeah, but then Xbox. Gears of War, I thought looked amazing. Yeah, it, it looked, looked like, more like Gears of War three than Gears of War Judgment, which rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm tempted to get the new, uh, the new, the light Xbox, whatever it is. The oh Xbox. yeah, yes, that's uh, that's not badly priced actually. And although it's not as powerful as the Scorpio, it is more powerful apparently. Yeah, apparently it can handle 4K or something. 
you well, yeah, upscaling to 4K somewhere. Actually, I'm probably not going to get the Scorpio. No. I'll go, I need an Xbox One, so. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> alright, I'm going to go into something uh, which you guys are not going to want to talk about. <laughs> but it's one of the standouts for E3 for me because it's very hard to sell me on this game. FIFA. <laughs> right. I'll switch off now, goodbye. Let's oh, jump into it, right? I've tried to get into FIFA for years and years and years, right? Mm. I can't. Like, cause, who who like, you tried to get into FIFA, sorry? Me. Oh, right, right. I, I can't like I can't stand them. All my friends play it, like, not you guys, but like all my like friends I go out drinking with or all my casual kind of casual gamers compared to us, like they love FIFA. That's all they do. Right. And they're always trying to get me into it. But I can't, I can't, I've never gotten through a season. I can't get through a season, I just get bored because it's the same thing. But now it's got a story mode. The closest thing I've got to FIFA is Rocket League. Or I did play <laughs> FIFA in 1999 or some shit. <laughs> FIFA is one of those games I play around friends' houses when they're like, hey, let's play FIFA. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's a great drinking game. It, to be fair, it is fun to play in a group, with a group of mates because it's just not my mates. They all dominate. They're all too good. Okay, it was well, a group of mates that can't play. So you're having fun, but I'm not because you yeah, kick my ass all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a group of mates that are all shit at FIFA, it can actually be pretty funny because it's just you watch each other be useless. But <laughs> yeah, Rocket League's my idea of a good football game. <laughs> yeah, but, like, now, but now it's got a story mode. I'm actually intrigued. Like I do, I would if it's got a, a narrative to it. I'm more likely to go through it mm. and actually put more invest more time into getting good at the game invest us doing the same thing over and over throughout a season which it kind of drags after a while yeah i found it so, funny though when the uh, when like the lead actor in the game came on stage and i was just like who the fuck's this guy he's just like talking like random football <laughs> gibberish it's like what <laughs> wrong room man yeah wrong room. <laughs> but i was well surprised like, it sold me i'm gonna get a fifa this year Fair enough. <laughs> you're going to get it on day one, or are you going to wait for another year and get it for 99p? Well, I don't know. There's no point getting it down the road because you like to play it with the seasons. So. Oh, that's true. That's and you always got me back into football. So. One thing that they do do, which is quite cool, is. Um, yeah, they do do. Uh, <laughs> is that they, um, they track the actual real life progress. So if someone gets injured, they are actually injured in the game. And uh, right, I didn't they, know they did that. They, like, that sort of stuff, which is quite a cool element because that means you kind of. the interaction with the real life element of it as well mm. so it's that kind of was that fourth there? dimension kind of did you watch the press conference for uh for ea no did you see you missed it jose Mourinho came on the stage it was the oh, most yeah. awkward thing i've seen in my life <laughs> like <laughs> that guy was blatantly getting paid a lot of money I mean, he's not a there. huge well, speaker anyway even when he's like after a match and he's just like uh, yeah you know like, he is <laughs> he's, just he's Kind of, yeah, he's just like, yeah, we did good, we did bad, you know, it happens. Well, he didn't say if he was just kind of just stood there, he's like, yeah, 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 FIFA, yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, I'm a Liverpool fan, we're going to kick your ass this season. So, and he's, just, right. he's like, huh, ah. yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he he's, walked off. He's, like... got, he's a very, like, stern guy. I mean, if, you, if you know him personally, he'll be funny, but mm. when, he, when he's not really passionate in something, he's just not there. I wonder what... Um... Like, what, what was everyone's biggest cringe moment of E3? There's always a few of them, but I would say, I mean, I'd say that was one of the, the sort of most cringy moments was listening on it's, that. There's two that jumps out to me. Um, it's when randomly those two game developers came down and they were wearing his bathrobes and they were like cheering. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, was yeah. Was that uh, Ubisoft? No, it was for Trials. Wasn't it? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just like, what yeah, the fuck Ubisoft, is happening? And he, and he started stroking a guy's hair and stuff like that. It's like, what? Uh, that was weird. And then the other one was when that Minecraft uh, demo oh, came on. Yeah. For VR. And I, I don't know what it is about that that girl who uh, does it, but she's very awkward. She's very much old. Like, you, you remember how Xbox used to do their conferences with like fist bump, fist stuff like that. Bump. It felt like that again. Did you you don't know about that, do you? <laughs> Basically, if I uh, if it's about, I'd say about four years ago now, yeah. wasn't it? About four oh, years ago. First first year of Connect, I think it was. Yeah, so yeah. they were demonstrating the Connect, and these two little <clears throat> kids were playing. Uh, the, I think it was probably Connect Sports or something. I don't yeah. know. And afterwards, you know when they do a really awkward acting. Yeah. So basically, after they do the game, they're like, yeah. Fist bump. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in front of like what, like a few thousand people in the it's, audience, it's, and then like a few million online or whatever. Oh, it's it the biggest sigh I've ever right. had. It's just like, oh my god. And what's going to happen is those kids are going to be like, get married at some point, and then <laughs> like, and this is your life. Oh. <laughs> this is how we met. Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, the wedding bells. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's just always those kind of moments at E3. There's some, there's some classic ones as well. I mean, like, there was Microsoft did another one that year as well, I think, with Killer Instinct. There was something one of the, the presenters said where he was like, he was he was fighting against a, a, a woman that was playing as well with him. And he was beating her up and he was going, just let it happen. Just, just take it. Just, just <laughs> yeah, let it happen. I remember that. I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is scripted, man. <laughs> they got, they got uh, done for that, didn't they? They did get in trouble for it, yeah. yeah. They got, um, they got a, well, they didn't get like sued or anything, but they did get some bad price for a while. That's but it's really like, bad. It you just don't you, say yeah, that. You can't, you can't <laughs> do things like that. But like, but the thing is now, I think, yeah, there, there was a couple of cringy moments, but there was no like, like in the big conferences, there was mm. nothing really massively cringy. But there wasn't like, because you know, usually we get uh, annoyed at the uh, the really uh, staged uh, multiplayer matches. Oh yeah, that was Tom and, like, Clancy this year. Yeah, wasn't like, it? Oh come on, go, go to the left, go to the left. Oh yeah, but there was none of that this year, really. There was one. There was there, that, there was, there was that one, but <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. Well, the Ghost Recon one. Yeah. No, I thought that was bad. Then when they're going bad? like, oh, I'm on your six, man, I'm on your six, and they're doing like this perfect playthrough. It's like, yeah, that's not. <laughs> have you, was, have you seen footage pretty. of people actually playing at E3? Yeah. No one got anywhere near like no. doing that good. Yeah, but you remember when the division was like, uh, was like shown like last year, and they're like, <laughs> they're no, like they're joking about... around with each other, like, I'm gonna pop this guy. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like there wasn't that. It was kind of more. It, it, it was wasn't more as subdued. bad. But it's not a bad moment. So they're getting better. Yeah. They're getting better. <laughs> So, um, yeah, what's, uh, any standout games? Standout games, I mean, well, my, my obvious one is the new Zelda. That was just, that was beyond expectations of how good it looks. I mean, they've shown, like, they, the first time they showed it was, like, 2014, and it was just that bit where Link's standing on horseback and then that, um, Guardian thing attacks him. Like, all the flames go off, and I was like, well, I'm already getting this. And then the next year, like a year later, we finally saw a little bit of gameplay footage. And yeah. it's like on the screen in the background of like a video they recorded, which was like, why the oh, fuck yeah, have you done ridiculous. this? And then it's complete silence for a year or two. And then it's like, yeah, okay, here's the game and eight hours of footage to go with it. And you're just like, you're watching the trailer. I've, I don't know how many times. You they, need to start, they need to do that more often now because games get so much coverage from mm. through the entire development process and with betas and everything that. You get the disasters which happen. Mm. Let's just point at Batman. Yeah. With their, how their <laughs> yeah. early their launch and it went horribly wrong. Uh, you kind of need to, in some ways, not tell the audience as much. So when yeah. a game comes out, they're like, actually, well, I did not see that coming. This is mm. cool. And then you, they'll go and buy that game immediately if they really want it. Instead of that whole, I've been waiting for three years now and I haven't stopped hearing about this thing yeah. the entire time. That's like, why I'm praying about the new Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. I really hope they don't announce every single world. Yeah. Because I already quiet. know, I already know, three of the ones are going. To, well, four of the ones are going to be in the game. Yeah, like ta- the two big ones being Tangled and Big Hero Six, and I'm yeah. just like, well, that's kind of cool because Big Hero Six is quite an interesting world. Yeah, but I would have been happy with them just saying Tangled. And yeah, they've announced that the majority of the worlds are going to be brand new. They're not going to be okay. some of the old worlds. That's good. It, it, it's the yeah, same with it's the same with movies. They fall into their tra- classic trait of like giving away the plotline in the trailer yeah. or Batman kind of versus Superman points. being a key factor or like uh, yeah that or Terminator Genesis yeah and it's just like if they just went with Batman and Superman if they had just gone like oh Batman oh Superman and then they left it as that yeah that would have been enough and to then you honest, would have got there and be like oh okay Doomsday sure. that film would have been seen just through the title they didn't even need trailers they just gone look here's Batman here's Superman yeah you just have some watch it. inconspicuous shots here and there them like, staring at each other and I'm gonna do their weird like lovey dovey remixes to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it extended out for that yet? Uh, it's out next week, I think. Yeah, but, I'm um, tempted to get it. I'm gonna, gonna give it a second it. chance. I gave Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, a second chance. And you enjoyed it. I'm gonna give this one a second chance. Although, chance. come on, man. Like, uh, Legolas's uh, gravity moment. Oh, God, The Matrix. <laughs> the Matrix is real. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> The thing that pissed me off, alright, we're gonna get it. It's just a massive there is tangent no spoon, now. <laughs> the thing that pissed me off about Battle of the Five Armies when I watched it, remember all the rants I had about Battle of the Five Armies when I think of it? I was amazed. I've never been so disappointed walking out of the cinema. But they never showed what happened to the Arkenstone. Yeah. That's resolved in the extended edition. So my gripe with it went, and then I was like, eh, it's actually. It's because they did it with three movies. Yeah. Like, if they did it in over two, so the end of the first movie would have ended when they opened the stone door. And that would have been a great cliffhanger. Yeah. Just been door slide open, boom, end. And then the second movie could have been everything else. Yeah. And it could have been concise and pretty epic. And you'd have been there going, oh dear God, what's happening? <laughs> Just so, so much. With, with, with the three, with the 
Battle of the Five, Five Armies. The problem with that film is, is the dragon dies in the first 20 minutes, which, if you've read the book, you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And the actual battle doesn't even happen in the book. I mean, it, it does, but it's yeah, knocked it? out, and he escapes. Well, oh, which he does over. in the film as well. He does in the it film. It just sees the majority of the battle. I, it, it was. I mean, obviously they couldn't cut out this massive battle. But it didn't need to be an entire film yeah. long. The thing is, like, I feel sorry for Peter Jackson though, because he was kind of forced into it. Yeah, he was like, forced to a third with film. With Lord of the Rings, he had about five years to prep before he actually started mm. filming. List, I like, uh, was it Del Toro? He left. Like oh, yeah. a couple years to do Pacific Rim. He just, he just, I don't know what the politics were within it, but he left anyway. And Peter Jackson was forced in. That's why it's CGI. Mm. Like he said, if he had the years to prep, it would have all been practical. It would have been how Lord of the Rings yeah. is. That is the so problem with kind production of companies. That... Is they're just like, oh, we've got to make money from this quick, so finish it now. It's like it's just a trilogy hype. Shit. Mm. It's a trilogy hype of like mm. everything now must be a trilogy because trilogy sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's wrong? What's wrong with actually like, just telling a good story for two films and then do an extended edition, which could be three movies if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think it all. I think that sort of problem started when they started going hey let's make the second and third one at the same time it's like no because yeah. it'll look shit like i think parts of the caribbean was one of the first films to do oh no the matrix did it as well and the harry potter so, did that too uh harry potter the seventh one wasn't it they both that's not too bad because it is i mean i suppose kind of the hobbit yeah, is bad well, have you but... seen the first one the first one oh yeah shit. that's true the first the, i mean like the first one although it was boring at least it was well it wasn't unfinished so to speak yeah like they actually did things properly yeah it was just a boring half of the book but it's just the whole thing of you're trying to drag out two parts of the story like there's a story and this is quite a new one or kind of outside the conventional story structure is beginning middle end it's like here's the world oh no there's a problem oh now we conclude it yeah that is the entire thing and when you split it into two or three movies you're splitting it into those sections or you're cutting off the drama that's the yeah. point speaking of splitting into the films have you heard about the new justice league film that they've now made it just one film rather yeah. than two I'm i happy thought about that well they're doing what marvel's doing with um with uh, infinity war no it's that's be two still standalone two movies no 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 as in they were going to do that but now they've made it one film instead they announced the other oh. day yeah, yeah. Very, very, sorry just, i thought you meant it was going to be two <laughs> things yeah marvel's still doing part <clears> one part two so there'll be still there'll be a standalone movie but there'll be like overarching plot lines yeah across them so it's still part one part two <laughs> I think it's how they're being referred to. Uh, the stakes, yeah. the stakes will just carry on into the second yeah. film. Well, right. Justice League will be the Justice League, and then you have Green Lantern Corp and all that stuff rolling in at some point. Well, here's a, a tangent scene. We're talking about superheroes. <laughs> what do you think about the new Spider-Man game in Nights City? Let's get back to it. <laughs> I thought that was really good actually, and when they announced it was all in-game footage, I was like, okay, yeah. It does. It's been it's a while since we had a good one, so I'm hoping it is because I always like the other Spider-Man games. Mm. I promise you need 2. a PS4 to play it. It's an exclusive. Maybe I can be able to afford it by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Kurt, do you have any thoughts on the new Spider-Man? <laughs> What's that, sorry? Do you have any thoughts on the new Spider-Man game? Uh, not really. Um, yeah, nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you're not really the Marvel person. It's just Spider-Man. Like, I've played those other games before. It's alright. It's just Spider-Man. I thought it was in... <laughs> I thought it was interesting that Insomniac are working on it. Yeah, well, they've come straight off of... Um, Ratchet and Clank. Well, Ratchet and Clank, yeah. and then they, uh, obviously they had that... What's that Xbox One game? Oh, uh... Sunset, Sunset Overdrive, yeah. which is kind of similar. You're like a super-powered kind of guy just fighting zombies, but mm. it's... Uh, so they've come off a kind of open-worldy <coughs> game like that. I think they could do a decent Spider-Man. Mm. I think it's better, like... Because there, there was rumours going around that Sucker Punch were going to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, that's been Sucker Punch... They're a really good developer, so yeah. I, I would rather them. Um, like, Spider Man's a good IP, but I'd rather have them yeah, they do made, their own uh, thing. They made Infamous Second Son, didn't they? I've just started yeah, playing that. They made that all the Infamous game. It feels like It feels like a. I mean, Infamous Second Son basically feels like, oh, you're playing an open world game with X Men powers. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is awesome. That's why people thought Sucker Punch were going to do it, because, mm. of, uh, because of their superhero kind of video game background. Yeah. But. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's Zomia. Zomia are a good developer for Sony. Like, I know they're not a first party, but because they can do what they do make good exclusives for Sony. Yeah. But look at Ratchet and Clank. Like. We've um, we've gone on about like what your favourite E3 thing was, what mine was, but what about yours, Pete? Um, so i generally really happy with Bethesda. Oh, yeah. That's generally my <laughs> the ballpark. Um, so obviously the, the HD version of Skyrim. Which would be oh, cool. Yeah, be Obviously, great. I've been playing with HD mods on PC for a while anyway, but nonetheless. Have you heard about the deal they're doing for 
the Skyrim uh, Remastered Edition, if you own the original one with all the DLC, you get it for free. Then I'm sorted. Then. Yeah, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is with the mods, I've been playing with like HD textures. If they're mm-hmm. going to be, they went as good as the full re-release because I think not everything's HD. But I've been playing with very pretty cities for yeah, a while. Yeah, what happens if uh, it turns out the HD remaster is not as good as your? <laughs> yeah, that'd be then I'm sure that. someone will make a mod to improve it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's generally the way with Skyrim. And well, it is going to use Fallout mods as well, so like yeah, yeah they have to. That's the entire yeah, reason the game's still not releasing it. playing. It's like Fallout 4. They just what well, they're releasing. That's another thing. Fallout 4 um, releasing three new oh, what, two, two add-ons and one DLC. It's you've got contraptions which lets you do like more advanced circuits, fireworks, and like some quite funky little kind of ball track things which you oh, have yeah. levers Root, and it hits something. Machines. Yeah, so you can make one of those in Fallout which would be hilarious. They're doing... Oh, my brain's just switched off. They're doing Nuka World which is the DLC, mm. which is like, I'm not, I think, I'm assuming that you get to be a bandit and get to play in this particularly a huge theme park world of that. Um, and the other, other add-on is... I'm just trying to find it, one second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind it, I'm just going to keep talking for a bit. Um, so yeah, they've got automatrons, which is you make your own robots. Wasteland workshops, their far harbors, the DLC, contraptions, vault tech. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vault tech, you can make your own vault, which would be cool because it'd be nice to have somewhere I can store my, all my power armor Apparently without the risk like, of being raided. It looks a lot like, um, you know, the app they released? Um, yeah. it's, it's basically that, but in game. Yeah, which sounds pretty cool. Because there are mods which let you make your own vault anyway, so I'm mm. guessing there's everyone like that. Um, but this will be. Not so, not full of issues, hopefully. Because yeah. the, the issue with mods is they have develop, development diamonds and people got like fix bugs. And if you're using more than one mod, it yeah. then get conflicts. I try to keep my mods relatively vanilla, just because I'm on my play first playthrough. I have played for 130 hours, so I'm quite fully <laughs> exploring this world, which shouldn't take that long. But one I thing am. that was at uh, Bethesda's, Bethesda's conference, it was kind of just like sort of half announced, but um, VR Doom. I played a bit of Doom. Uh, during E3 week actually and it's a pretty awesome game and playing that in VR would just be it'd be awesome because just the uh, graphics and the, how well it runs just having that in VR well, would be it would be cool but the only thing I'm a little bit kind of like eh about VR is they haven't found a good alternative for walking like, uh, that's true like the telepo- teleporting works when the game's designed for it like so Minecraft kind of works because it's, it's a, Minecraft is blocky mm. but with, with Fallout the whole idea of it is that you're kind of Sneaking around these corners and mm. trying to be—you can be somewhat tactical, like hitting headshots and stealthiness. I know I generally get guns are blazing, but when you can just teleport into the middle of bandits, yeah, shoot them with a rocket launcher and then teleport out, will it affect the kind of immersion of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think with PlayStation VR, they're doing it. If you use the PlayStation Move controllers, you have your hands and they have analog sticks on. Yeah, or you can use the PS4 controller. But then that, that also kind of like off the point of having headset if you're using controller. Yeah, the headset is pretty want... much just going to be for looking around yeah. with your yeah. head. Well, well, ideal ideal situation. Uh, apparently, uh, the <coughs> demo for Resident Evil 7, apparently everyone's been getting sick off it. Oh, I bet, because the issue with VR is... Um, Motion sickness. Yeah, because if you're, if you're falling, for example, your body expects to fall, so you're just like, whoa, okay, that's not happening. Yeah. Which is why they've implemented the teleporting thing, because it's an instantaneous transport. You, your character, there is no visual jolting you just you're one place in your next place and it happens like that so it helps to reduce that kind of nauseous feeling mm. so if you walk off an edge and you fall down and you're, you're not you feel like you're falling in your head but then your legs aren't doing anything it's going yeah. to freak you feel sick that's uh, it's, it's going to be interesting i mean I'll, i really want to try vr i'm not sure if i'll end up liking it or not but you, you need to try it before you <laughs> buy it yeah because mm. uh, apparently for you think i a red 30% of people will get motion sickness yeah but also it's I hear people describe it as can you get your VR legs so some people start feeling a bit like Ugh. and once they get used to it then they're okay because yeah. they're kind of it's similar with any adapted. technology really I mean yeah. everyone was talking about how like when they would watch 3D films and stuff they would get headaches and stuff mm. when TV first came about people yeah. said they got headaches and everything it's, it's just because your eyes are pretty much seeing something that they've essentially never seen before yeah, and it's, it's not natural so yeah. I'm hoping VR does take off because it's a really cool concept and oh, really storytelling can change completely mm. from the games we know with controllers and stuff got yeah. great like controllers work but being able to physically interact with something or having like a digital world to play in. Yeah, they got to think about how you do it. Mm. But it'd be cool. So, so 
I'm going to go into my favourite names because you missed me. <laughs> I thought I could have sworn <laughs> no, you said so. You just went on to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so mine's kind of obvious what my big thing is. Um, it's Resi 7. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I shut my pants. Over what that what about the Crash Bandicoot remakes? Yes, but they didn't show anything, <laughs> didn't so show I didn't get hype. So they, they announced it, and I was like, yes, they're going to show footage. Oh, it's a Skylander. Yeah. <laughs> that was really disappointing. So I'm hyped for it. Like I'm glad it's. I know it's coming, but they've said it's a long, long way off. Mm. Like, but Resi Seven looks amazing. I'm still trying to figure out what that bloody dummy thing is for. I'm trying to figure out what the freaking uh, is for. It annoys me. <laughs> no one knows. I've been watching all the live streams and stuff. I just like that you can great. do it in more than one way, and you still get like, welcome to the family. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to the family, son. Sony sold me on VR. Yeah, like I was adamant that I was I was going to wait until the reviews, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to get it day one now. Fair enough. Because um, think about it, Resi Seven. I've already said Resi Seven is my favorite games. Of uh, not Resi Seven is my favorite game. Resi Evil is my favorite games. Fucking Star Wars. Yeah. Who's the biggest Star Wars nerd in our group? Probably between you two. <laughs> I yeah, fucking I love that shit. Maybe a close call here. Um, bloody. What was it? Final Fantasy VR. Yeah, yeah. that looks really cool. They've <laughs> also got the Star Trek uh, ship crew. Oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> still, <laughs> still, I don't care. It's still a cool one. <laughs> it's, it's still a cool one because it's. It, oh no, fair enough. I, I no, can see it'd be cool for people who like Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. that's the thing. A problem, the only problem I see about that game, that Star Trek one, is how are you going to get. Like, it's going to cost a bomb to play that game, like multiplayer. You're going to have to have friends with, like, fucking. It's, it's, I, it I hope it's a anyway to play VR multiplayer. Because it's well, like, what, 700 quid per headset. It's uh, Not PlayStation VR. How much is heavy a PlayStation VR? Uh, three it's 350. Okay, yeah. But so you need the camera even and then, PlayStation Move. Even well, then, 350 which, uh, plus the console and everything. It's going to still it's, add up quite quickly. With PC, it's... Well, PC even then, if so. you're in the five, what is it? How many million people have bought uh, 40 PS4 million now? now, I think. If you got on the bandwagon early, you'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> not arguing that, but still. <laughs> but that's the play together. I've got to buy a PS4. It's fine. And, just just wait for the PlayStation Neo to get announced and the PS4 drop like a rock in price <laughs> true yeah ps4 uh, yeah I, i've always had playstations growing up like i've always had i had every generation except this one it's just i had a car and uni and everything to table this yeah. time when when you get older you don't have as many consoles damn you <laughs> responsibilities apart talk, from me i've still got the ps4 <laughs> talk about final fantasy though um do you remember last year they announced that weird final fantasy game uh, world of final fantasy the, oh the, yeah yeah the ps4 one I was watching a demo on it earlier because I didn't. We didn't get a chance to watch the Square Enix stuff when we we're uh, watching it last week. So I've, I've literally the last couple of days I've been going through all the Square Enix stuff, and um, they, <laughs> that World of Final Fantasy is, it's odd, but look actually looks pretty cool. It was meant to be like a, a entry level Final Fantasy for like loads of players. Yeah. But um, it's got a weird. It's got a original combat system similar to. It's got the active time battle back from Final Fantasy mm-hmm. seven, eight, and uh, nine. And uh, you, you have to make you have to make totems, so you get three votes. So you're like a little cube man, or you can be a, uh, its adult form, and you have to get three things. And you, you put your party on top of each other like a totem, yeah. <laughs> like a totem born. You attack like that. It's all be, and then the summons in it are all Final Fantasy characters. Yeah. So you get like Cloud, Squall. They should offer uh, Cloud, Squall, Yuna, and Lightning. So kind of the big four. Yeah. And what kind of last? last 15 years yeah. 20 years and what what I was actually happy about the the voice actor does squall is the guy from Kingdom Hearts even though it's, nice. it's kind of obvious that he would do it or yeah, he's S- Sora or no Squall it's Squall, squall from Hearts, well he's called Leon in Kingdom Hearts yeah. he changed his name but he's called Squall in Final Fantasy 8 well, he's, but he's, it's kind yeah. of obvious he would have had the same voice actor but I was like yeah, <laughs> like, yeah then come back in. As soon as you said Leon, I just thought, where's everyone going? <laughs> Bingo. Well, Squall is ro- uh, when his world got destroyed in Kingdom Hearts, he he abandoned his name Squall and became Leon. Yeah. So, <laughs> in Kingdom Hearts. Did he get emo hair? And stuff? No, he looks exactly the same. But yeah, like, he's always had kind of slightly emo thing going. Just, uh, he's, <laughs> the, he's probably the most emo character. He's probably more emo than Bloody Cloud. <laughs> like his story is so bloody confusing in Final Fantasy VIII. Can you it's get more emo than Cloud? Yeah, but you know, like, Cloud's got a reason for being emo. I like he's lost his memories. He's like all like all the shit School's that happens to him. It's just a moody kind of. Well, you, when you start playing eight, you're essentially a teenager. Yeah. Say you're sixteen, like, in essence. But then you you're just a moody guy at high school, and then you're like, oh cool, I'm the badass now. I've got to save the world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's exactly it. Like he's he's not the most uh, 
exciting character, but I like him in Kingdom Hearts. He's a badass in Kingdom Hearts, so <laughs> I actually like Squall. Um, so. <laughs> in Kingdom Hearts 2 with this Squall and Cloud back to back. Oh, that, that is the greatest scene. That's, that, that's all that, that just made me so happy. I was like, can the game end now, please? <laughs> And I like him because his voice actor in Kingdom Hearts 2 onwards is the ac voice actor of Asuma in Naruto. So I'm like, yeah! <laughs> you mean <Ninja> Ruta. <laughs> um, So we've kind of gone through Nick's Speedens and mine. Skirt, what was your sort of favourite slash biggest announcement at E3? Um, hmm. Didn't really have any favourites to really think of. I think Ubisoft is alright, only because they had uh, For Honor show and they had the guy come out. Oh, that looked He looked cool. like a fucking Viking. <laughs> oh, Jason. Jason, Jason Vanderberg. Vanderberg. Yeah. <laughs> he's oh, I forgot about that game. He's yeah. amazing, that guy. He's called the Dark Lord on Twitter, so, you know, that should tell you something. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And he walks around with a cane. The Lord of the Sith will <laughs> rule the galaxy. Apart from that, I don't know. I think Sony is pretty good. Only because um, their like whole music and everything else is all orchestrated. So every time that someone was... came on stage, especially the head of Sony, it sounded like something like the Imperial March or something, like an evil overlord. It's quite funny. But, yeah. That new soundtrack, for, that, the soundtrack they did for God of War, that was fucking amazing. Yeah, it was pretty good. That I think orchestrated they were, beginning. Yeah, I think they're doing all the, I think they're doing live orchestra for all the trailers and stuff as well, which is pretty good. Well, all the gameplay yeah. videos that are going up, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, every, uh, every, every bit of footage, every bit of music you heard at their conference was the orchestra. Yeah. Right? It wasn't any recorded stuff, which was pretty. In, awesome. in terms of presentation, it was really good for Sony, I think. But uh, mm. yeah, I don't know. Nothing really stuck out though. Like, like I said, I think uh, what Peter said about Bethesda, um, their their conference was quite interesting to me just because of the whole Skyrim thing as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a <laughs> huge, yeah. And also yeah. the uh, overly screaming woman in the background. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> she was really fucking annoying. But uh, no, yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, more, more for uh, more for uh, all for. All for Is there anything anyone? I'm sorry. Anything anyone think that was missed out or they would like to have seen at E3? I would have Ooh. seen this a lot, really, to be honest. There was so much yes. missing from that E3. Evil Within 2. Um, I, wanted... I was pissy about that. Oh, yeah, because yeah, that was meant to be announced. They, they never even showed what uh, they were making. Tango Games, was it Tango Dreamworks? I think they called Tango, Tango Gameworks. Yeah. They never shown what they, uh, they were making. And they apparently have been in development on something, which is probably going to be Evil Within 2. And I'm so... Come on, I'm waiting. Yeah, I mean, but you're mad in Kingdom Hearts three for you as well. I'm not disappointed by that because the stuff they showed on two point eight is absolutely amazing. That's true. Um, what about Final Fantasy seven remake? That must have been fairly non few. They should. They they said last year that is very early development. Mm. A bit of shame Resident Evil two wasn't shown. Yeah. But they should have. Um, but they're putting all their focus on seven, so I can see why they didn't do that. I just just thinking back, completely unrelated. But I think I wish they gave uh, Heidi Kojima more stage time, actually. Because <laughs> like he was there. nothing to show. Yeah. Yeah, but he was there. He's like, I'm back. He showed a very short trailer, which was questionable, and then he left. I was like, okay. <laughs> to be fair, he should. I, I don't think he should have been there. No, I don't think he would because it was. <laughs> Because the thing is, they've even said post E3 that they haven't even decided on a game engine. Yet. <laughs> I know. It's like, like they have got... nothing to show. Or well, they show with Norma Reedus like hugging a baby. Well, you should have done. Norman Reedus, Reedus S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, fan yeah. service there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, what they should have done with him is just gone, have him come in like very mysteriously and then just be like, smoke bomb and just disappear. Because then he'd just be like, <laughs> <Yeah>. gone. <laughs> Did you find funny that like, you had to walk on the light down the corridor and he walked ahead of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I was happy uh, to see him. Uh, it's kind of like a big fuck you to Konami as well. So Yeah, the whole... <laughs> he also definitely should have said, um, sorry uh, sorry to keep you waiting. I oh, kept you waiting, huh? In fact. <laughs> Talking like... about Konami, well, <laughs> Konami's uh, Pez doesn't have a story mode, does it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> be fair, who even plays... Play... No one seems to play Pez, do A lot it? of people play Pez. Okay. A lot of people do. I, I personally don't. But <laughs> it's running on what, the Fox what was, engine. What was missing? The Fox. Yeah, I can't that believe one. they still got the Fox. Uh, they shouldn't even be allowed to call it that anymore, man. What are you using that's, it on that's, the? Uh, that's Kojima's name. What are you using it on the Pachink? Uh, was it Pachink? Oh, I can't remember. Pachinko was. machine. That's the one. Oh, the Pachinko machine for Metal yeah. Gear Solid Three. That was such a piss take. That trailer. <laughs> I was like, you, you, know, they, you have done that just to piss off every Metal Gear fan. Thing is, I'm, I'm sure not a it serves, anymore, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it serves an audience in Japan, but like to everyone else, just like 
Oh, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. I think, I think, Let's like, not get into Metal Gear because we have a full podcast like, lined up for that. Did you see, uh, did you see <laughs> on Twitter though, like uh, Kojima posted up a picture of him just drinking out of a cup that just says Konami Tears on it? <laughs> oh, <fun>. yeah. <laughs> do, do you know, like earlier, you were, you know, where I was going on about how Battle of the Five Armies was the biggest disappointment I have ever been coming out of cinema? Mega Solid 5 is the biggest disappointment I've ever had coming out of a video game. game. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Completely agree. God, that game is shit. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what was missing from E3 for you, Kurt? Uh, if anything. Uh, I don't know, because I wasn't expecting anything. Like, there was nothing mm. I'm, like hyped for. Like, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't mind have seen a bit more Final Fantasy stuff. Um, Ooh, Kurt, did you, did you... We missed it, but did you know they're um, baking Final Fantasy 12 HD? Are they? Are yeah. I'm uh, not too, Yeah. I don't really care. Oh, wasn't that the one nobody liked? <laughs> no, everyone. a lot of people loved well. Yeah. Really? I, I yeah, wasn't. so that's coming at uh, <laughs> Eden's face right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, 12 is People kind of love just, it because it's yeah. in the same world as Tactics. That's a fine thing to grab, though. <laughs> it, it's a pretty good game. It's good. It wasn't, it wasn't my, my cup of tea. I'm going to play it because I haven't been able to play it properly, so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to enjoy is, Final right. Fantasy XII. I was a massive Final Fantasy fan. I bought 12, <laughs> okay? I bought it from the shop, so I was like, okay, I played 10, I liked 10, I got 12, and I played it for about two hours, and then I took it back. So, <laughs> you know, I should tell you <laughs> The only thing right. I didn't like about it is Van. Was it Van, the main character? Van, Van, I don't okay, know. Okay, Van. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of a bit like... I, I saw him for two seconds, but I'm going to force myself to that, and I'm going to enjoy it. Because I like Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Final Fantasy. I'm gonna put this on the bed. Final Fantasy 15 looks really cool. But, oh, mind, but mind you, I'm one. Yo, Final Fantasy 15. I can't. Although yeah. the um, the demo they showed at Xbox, they should not have let that guy play that game because he got his ass kicked and it made <laughs> yeah. it look shit. <laughs> I've been following Final Fantasy 15 for so long. Like, it's, if that game. It's really cool. And even got like an anime. Yeah, yeah, I've been following, yeah. following Isn't that. Isn't he getting I, a film as well or some shit? I bought yeah. Type Zero so I could play the demo oh, first Type is beta. Awesome. Of it, and then it's uh, that game is gonna they be got, absolutely amazing. They got um, 15 VR as well. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. no, was just. I'm, I'm curious on how like the moving around how that'd work, but the fight it looks cool. Teleport because characters yeah. can teleport anyway. So. True, but it's just kind of teleporting everywhere. It makes sense. Teleport, teleport, in teleport. That game there. I don't walk. I just bounce from place to place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what did you guys um, make of the PC gamer E3? Huh? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Should we save? We, should we save that for the end? Well, P- PC Gamers Conference was just it. It, it kind of needs to just be completely. I don't even watch it properly. It's so boring. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's the it, same it, format. The thing is, it's trying. Yeah, it, it's like it's trying to be like a, like a talk show kind of host sort of thing, and that just doesn't work for showing off games. And the freaking um, uh, the company they're out there sponsored by. It's like yeah, check out our new graphics cards. It's like. Yeah, no, no one cares. No. Like people buy graphics cards because they're either cheap or powerful. You, you show, don't show, show them off. Yeah, show us what it can do, and then we'll buy it. Yeah, kind if of. Thing, it looks pretty. Oh, it's got to look pretty. No, I mean, you yeah. know, it's got to look you know sleek and double fans. It's like, no, we don't give a shit. <laughs> well, you're not going to look it anyway when it's in exactly. your machine. <laughs> it's not it's a like PS4. Shit. You need a PS4 or the Xbox One to look sleek. Ooh, the new Xbox One looks nice actually. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. the thing is, a console is part of your like. Home entertainment system so generally it's like well, in this room here it's in the living room underneath the tv mm. and anyone can see it when they walk in but a graphics like, card yeah like a, <laughs> like a pc you walk into my bedroom it's on the side that's what you expect it to be it's a box it's well you never know some kid might be at home beating himself off over the new chips on that thing oh i'm sure someone is oh, that's a There's... gold chip <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can get an extra twenty frames a second. <laughs> oh, but yeah. it's, it's just like, I mean, the host, he's fine. He's fairly funny. I don't really know who he is, but he's yeah, alright. Right. It's, it's just, him. it's just the content of it. It's like, look, you just need to show games and move on to the next one and show uh, another I game. I find it a bit cringy, yeah. <laughs> personally. Yeah. I just yeah, like, oh, I think, oh, could you imagine if, so ignoring the whole like. If you got rid of the Americanism, it's that kind of like, hey, 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 it's that kind of showmanship, and you just put like a British guy there, <laughs> it'd be completely different, but I'm not sure it'd have that kind of wow factor, yeah. which everyone likes from E3, or people, people like from E3, because uh, obviously the British guy's like, hey, we've got a thing, cool, bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that would be the entire show, so it's... I think that the uh, fine I think line. The problem with the PC gamer thing, though, is like it, it's it's almost like it's kind of not their fault because the thing is, is it's PC gamer. They're just a, a magazine. It's not like mm. the thing is PC is it's 
isn't owned by anyone, it's yeah. just PC. Xbox, Sony, Nintendo have mass millions of dollars to back them up. PC Gamer has themselves and then a sponsor who always uses it to their full advantage. Oh yeah. That's why it's probably not so good. If they, I don't know, if a, a better company backed them, I think it would be mm. a lot better. But I, definitely. I suppose, it would be a few years. I suppose Microsoft tried doing that with their uh, E3 by saying, Coming to Xbox One and Windows, was it Windows uh, 10 every fucking me, time? Xbox yeah. One and Windows like, 10. oh wow, it's coming to Windows 10. So yeah, just keep keep listting the reasons not it's to buy an Xbox um, One. Okay. The Windows yeah. Store is just tanking basically for games. Yeah, yeah. it's because uh, yeah, like, hey, they got so many different systems you have to use for PC. It's the one downside. So you got Steam, which is the, you're gonna universal one generally. And you go through Steam, update and management. But then you go for Ubisoft, and you've got to use their one. And oh. you go for EA, you've got their one. Oh. And then Microsoft are trying to do their own thing, but I think people are just going, no. They have announced, <laughs> actually, now. that they're going to sell games through Steam now. They're going to have to. Is good. Day, if you want, need to do. If you want exposure, like if you, you know, link exclusive content or something to uh, their own systems, people will maybe go there. But Steam is such a kind of established and reputable, reputable yeah. company. The thing is, though, it's like, I'm not sure if any of you guys remember this. I only know it because my, my older brother had Steam when it first came out. Steam yeah. was gone no, when it came out. It was out. bad. It was, your Half-Life was the only game you had on it. Well, it was the only game you had on it, and it took hours to update. It had yeah. DRM, so it was really awkward to load. It's, uh, it didn't take, now, take one if you go from internet speed to Zen and now. And mm. They were trying to start a change, which was kind of painful, but for Half-Life did very much helped that considering Half-Life 2 was amazing and Half-Life is still good wait we've mentioned Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2 Half-Life 3 confirmed <laughs> so, that game, that, I, I do yeah, wonder if that so, game is even I don't think in, it'll in, ever in their mind I tell you what if that game's ever ever announced at E3 I think the internet blow up <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't think it'll happen because the issue is there's so much hype that no matter what they make it's not going to be good mm. like well you hope it be good and I'm sure someone will like it people will like it but the amount of flack they're going to get, no matter what they do, it's like Duke Nukem. When oh it, yeah! It took so long to get out, and then we got it, and it was it's okay. But the thing is, special. Duke one worried about Final Fantasy 15 because it took him 10 years to be to make to be made. So yeah. Might, I know, but I'm praying like, it's good. With Duke Nukem and Final Fantasy, though, like Duke Nukem, they were making it back in '98, yeah. and then it kept jumping to new consoles. Mm -hmm. Whereas with um, Final Fantasy 15, although they started making it, they threw it all out the window and started making a new game. So we will still probably play well yeah. but Duke Nukem was never going to play well it moved to like four, yeah. was it four generations it's, it's just the anticipation created by a game of like being wait, waited for that long mm. but then think about Kingdom Hearts 3 how many people are anticipating that like yeah. a lot of people haven't played a Kingdom Hearts game since 2 at least with Kingdom I haven't uh, at least with Kingdom Hearts they have had other content coming out so if you wanted to follow the story yeah but a lot of the fans who call it, uh, haven't played more than the played spell titles they've just been waiting for free yeah so I think a lot of those fans because Kingdom Hearts has a massive fan base a oh huge yeah it's fan huge. Base, but a lot of people kind of skipped out on the side because it was on handheld devices and stuff like that yeah you have to like fight different consoles to so when they're going to free they're not going to have a bloody clue yeah it is true I think it depends because they may make it so it's kind of like Borderlands 2 for Borderlands 1 you don't need to play it mm. okay because... oh no they do they literally uh Dream Drop Distance is the setup. Okay. It's going to go straight. The, the, you need to play Dream Drop Distance to go into free. Okay. Because it's the big setup for Fair it. Fair enough. So I'll do that before I play them. I reckon I'll just PS4 soon. literally put it on Steam like a week before it comes out. Like, oh yeah, here you go, Half-Life 3. I reckon that's all yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that, that would be... <laughs> it'll just, they, they, it, sorry. I was just saying, if there's like no build-up to it, it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, this is coming out. Enjoy. And I think that'll yeah. be enough for people to get excited over it. And uh, yeah. That'll sell like hotcakes. To be honest, it. Yeah, that'd be the best way of doing it. You do a Five Night at Freddy's, that's what they do with them. Oh, they fucking release those like every six months, don't they? There's only one guy who does it. They do a roller coaster one. They were. Isn't there like a roller coaster at Friday Night's Freddy's theme park? <laughs> There's an the RPG one, apparently they're bombed. They yeah. Apparently got I, taken off after like a week. I heard of that, I was like, what? Alright, uh, one thing, well, last thing I want to talk about anyway before we go into is. Um, Going back to Nintendo, because we haven't really spoken about oh, Nintendo. Oh yeah, I, I wanted to um, say what, I, what was missing from them as well. Let's go I switch off now. Talk about the new the new Pokemon demo. Yeah. I love Pokemon, it's one of my favourite franchises, um, but that demo... They just, they ru they ruined their own demo because they were sh they were just taking so long to do anything. Yeah, it's like, it would have took a space of five, but they're trying to drag out this little demo for a whole half an hour thing. So it's like, look at the grass. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know what that was, there. Nick? You know what that Whoa, was? let's walk one step. <laughs> well, I think the problem was they were translating on, on the go as well, so... Yeah, that while was they're yeah, showing but, but, something, you but you don't stand still. Like you, you just stood still and wait for the translation. If you carried on battling and doing stuff, out, it would have mm. been fine. I think it's because the Pokemon's Japanese not really people a game want to see it. Because well. obviously, if he's doing one thing, then doing another, then the English translation won't make any sense because he's done something completely different. Yeah, but if you that. if you look at the Square Enix uh, presentations, they were fine with the translations and stuff. They'll show stuff and do the translations and it worked fine. Mm. Yeah, it just seemed like it was like, it was off. It was like it's because like, I've been. We ain't played for bloody ages. Mm. The, thing is with po- the thing is with Pokemon games as well, is they're not something you show off in that manner. Just show a trailer. You yeah. don't need to show it off in like that yeah. sort of sense. And I hope they don't announce every bloody Pokemon before this is released. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with, um, with mention- <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, with, with mentioning Nintendo as well, we've kind of gone round about what's missing from E3. For me, it was that um, Retro have been working on a game for like three, you know, the people who make um, Metroid Primes and Donkey Kong. They've been working on a game since they finished Tropical 3s, which was like two, three years ago. I need to rebuy that game. And they still haven't announced what it is. And it's like, I know it's probably coming to NX, but it would at least be nice to go, by the way, Retro are working on a new game. Which thing is what it's called? Metroid? I don't know. I think they do need to bring back Metroid properly because like it's been gone for so long now. Um, I don't think it'll be another Donkey Kong because although Donkey Kong's, I mean, Tropical Freeze was amazing, but I think they want to do something bigger than that this time. But I kind of wonder if they're going to go on to something else. I mean, I don't think it'll be F Zero. I think Sega did such a good job of that on GX that they will probably just get them to do it again. But I'm trying to think like what other franchises Nintendo could bring back. If they do another Donkey Kong, they need to bring back uh, K Roll. They need to bring back the two-player thing as well, where like you know, where oh, you you, switch between characters. See what annoys me about these remakes, right? Well, not remakes, the new, like, new, new re-releases. They, I hate the new system. Like I, Donkey Kong is a partner-based system. Like you mm-hmm. go around, and I hate I would like Diddy's on your back. Yeah. Time. Like, like I like playing as Donkey Kong, but sometimes I want to play as Diddy yeah. and I want to play as Dixie. I like the movement to Donkey Kong. I like the, the actual physics element to it. Oh, yeah, it works completely but fine. That it's yeah. just like why can't I switch to Diddy Kong or why can't I switch to Dixie Kong? It's like and they, they, they kind of shoot themselves in the foot. Like they're great games, don't get mm. me wrong, but they're kind of. It's like it doesn't it's feel like to me. It doesn't feel like Donkey Kong, yeah. like Donkey Kong Country. And they're, yeah. if they put if they had the Donkey Kong name, that's fine. But when they're going Donkey Kong Country, mm. it's like this isn't Donkey Kong yeah. Country. Like <laughs> it's, it's, they're great games, but they do need to tweak them slightly. Yeah. But the level design, fantastic. There's a level oh, yeah. in yeah, definitely. It's a level level in Tropical Freeze where you're climbing up um, a you're in a blizzard climbing up a mountain and it's one of those silhouette levels. Yeah. And it, every section of it just reminded me of like you know like in Uncharted when you get like a set piece and you're like fuck fuck. Yeah. Every minute of it was like that and I was like this is incredible. <laughs> but they they just need to bring back the partner system. That's all they need to do. I need to rebuy it because I ran out of money. So it's I only fifteen it. quid, uh, fifteen or twenty quid now. It's one of the Nintendo Select games. Oh, is it? Yeah, you can mm-hmm. get it pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. Have to rebuy um, it. But um, they do need to bring back Metroid. Um, mm-hmm. If they do, I don't know if I want it to be three D. I wonder if they, I hope they could go back Metro to the two D style. Metroid Prime's good. I think they will probably do three D because it's bigger budget. Oh yeah, but... definitely. But like Metroid Prime's are fine. But I the Metroids I love are the two D ones. I do want a three D S Metroid. I want to get like because I I finally got back into Super Metroid and finally figured out where the hell I had to go, and it is fantastic. I can't put that game down when I start playing it, and I would love to have another one. It'd be awesome. But yeah. don't get Retro to do it. Get like a, another developer to do. I think. Yeah, just have it as like a, you could even have it as a Nintendo uh, store thing, like just mm. something small, like fifteen quid game. Yeah. So, but I might say this about Resident Evil, like they, they should make a classic Resident Evil, sell it for fifteen quid. Yeah. Or something, and then have a little, and then that's a class for the classic fans, and you can do your big budget ones. Yeah. But it's same with Metro because they do all these like uh, Metrovania titles and. All yeah, the they're time. just never like, as good. It's like just do. Like, Classic Metroid. Like, I would want like, like a Zero Metroid, Mission. Like a Metroid Fu- Fusion 2. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And oh, very much your fusions is absolutely amazing. I'm game. not sure if you would have ever heard about it, but there was a game in development years ago called Metroid Dread. Or it might have been I rumored. have heard of, I heard of a 2D was, one they were making. Yeah, it was meant yeah. to be like a, a, another 2D Metroid for the 3DS, and then it just kept getting pushed back and never getting announced. And it's it, they've never officially cancelled it, but mm. they've also never officially announced it. So. Yeah. I do. Um, yeah. The other thing I thought that was missing from Nintendo's as well, I mean, obviously they needed some spectacle, but they should have shown off the NX. I know they want to do it at their own conference and everything like Sony and Microsoft did years ago, but they need to build... This machine comes out in, what, it's June now, it comes out in March. 
six, seven, eight, nine, nine months until it comes out, and we don't even know what it looks like or is called yet. Yeah, pictures have been nice. Even if it's just like, yeah. a, hey, it looks pretty. Anything. Yeah. Like they they need to go like here's the console, here's what's coming out for it. They need to do it. In, they need to do it within the next two months, or it's just not going to have enough hype. I mean, one of the biggest examples of not hyping your consoles is the Sega Saturn. They announced it at E3 and released it August. <laughs> two months for oh, the, yeah. for everyone to develop for it, <clears throat> for the yeah, manufacturers it's... to get ready. Unbelievably, that's that console did. I was one of the worst selling consoles of all time. And it's because they completely shot themselves in the foot. <laughs> Talking about new consoles, though, you know the Sony conference. Mm. They announced that all the trailers they showed were running on PS4 and not on the Neo. Yeah. So which is good. So yeah, they look definitely. great. And I mean, it's because everyone's a bit worried about the Neo and how if they do like a, a new 3DS sort of thing. You know, yeah. Like, is it exclusive games for that? How is that doing? With the new 3DS, it sold well, but it has one exclusive game. It should it? have two. Hyrule War- Warriors. No, Hyrule. Hyrule Warriors Legends, I think yeah. it's called. Like, the there is reviews for that game that say it's uh, a four because it's terrible. Yeah. And others say it's an eight because it's great. It's because they played it on the two different systems. The original system can can just it just can't handle it. It'd be like running, be like running GTA Five on a two thousand five PC. Yeah. Just not gonna happen. Yeah. They <laughs> they should have just gone right. It's an exclusive to the new 3DS. You did it with Xenoblade Chronicles. Why not do it with that? It didn't sell very well because a lot of people thought, oh, it runs on the normal 3DS. No, it, it, it doesn't. So, it, I wouldn't mind getting it, because it is only like 12 quid now, because yeah. they instantly dropped in price, but it's like, why don't you just make it exclusive and just make it look better? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't like the idea P- of um, exclusives in slight iterations of handheld consoles and consoles. I think that kind of, <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be across the board. It can't be just, like if they released a, the 4K Neo or whatever, and they start making exclusive games for that system, it's just going to piss off a lot of original PS4 owners because they're not going to want to have to mean? buy a new console. What would you feel if um, they did something similar to like Hyrule Warriors, where although it runs on the original PS4, it runs like shit? I just want to buy the game. Like I just I don't yeah, I don't yeah. see why I should have to buy a new console to play a fucking buy game when I own the original console. <laughs> You know? Well, Agreed. you should have always bought Hyrule Warriors on Wii U anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that game's fully amazing on Wii U. Yeah, the, what annoys me about it, though, is all the DLC that comes to the 3DS. They're only releasing like a, a little bit of it for the Wii U, mm. so you can't get all the characters. It's like, oh, fuck Can off. Can you get Linkle? <laughs> uh, yeah, she's a free update. The issue you run, though, by having a game which will... To, if, if the other consoles are so much better than the PS4, which they shouldn't be, considering the generation, um, you could run a risk like Mercenaries. Mercenaries 2, actually. Uh, it was a PlayStation... Two game, which had on PS2, then on PS3 and PC, but the PS2 thing was so different. To the, the entire game was different. Oh yeah, yeah. It was such a, like a, such a bad bodge. Like the number two and like number two on the PS3 and PC looked amazing. It looked mm. really cool, it looked, like very colourful and everything. But number two looked exactly like number one. But if you played the PS2 version and then you played the PS3 version, you would, wouldn't think they're the same game. Mm. Just like, like not, not even the gameplay was the same. There's nothing really bring them together yeah well, that's like uh Sonic. <laughs> yes Sonic that's what Lynch, I was, yeah. Yeah. Sonic Sonic was thinking the same thing and like the wii version was uh completely different the wii and the ps2 versions were the same yeah yeah and then, and the, then the other the, the next gens had a totally different it should be like 1.5 the and then though, two. it's like they both had their merits the wii u had pretty good it had good levels they weren't they, sorry the, the, the wii, wii had good, good. Uh, uh wolf uh wolf link uh, uh hog levels were a lot better on yeah, the wii mostly the because wii. they didn't last 25 fucking <laughs> minutes <laughs> that's way too long for sonic yeah. yeah but then the sonic levels in the next gen ones were absolutely phenomenal yeah so. I mean, they were they were good on both. The Wii ones were enjoyable levels, but they weren't as good. That's what I'm surprised about. Why was there no Sonic game announced? Apparently, the they're announcing it because it was Sonic's 25th anniversary yesterday, and everyone thought they were going to announce it then. They still didn't, but they have this big conference thing next month where apparently they might announce it. Generations two, <laughs> hopefully. What I'd like to see is like another Sonic Adventures game. That'd be cool. But then again, really good. Sonic you, 06 right, would never I'm, be that. I'm, just, I'm sorry, because everyone always says this, like, to do another adventure. Have you played Adventures recently? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. Sonic, the Sonic <laughs> Adventure so 2. so broken. No, the 2 is just... fine. No, I can't stand 2. Take Sonic levels are good. Son- take the one you've, you've been playing it's, the new Sonics, it's got, so the mechanics have changed. The Sonic levels are great. 
but, but everything else it's, is terrible. It's, yeah, it's, the, it's the same with the Unleash. Like, the Sign levels are great, but the Werehog levels are shit. It's, like, it's exactly the same. They were always shooting can't. themselves with the gimmick. Yeah. But yeah, the Sonic levels from Adventure, yeah, I'd like that back. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd not, not, I not quite like, like Knuckles. Shit. Knuckles is okay. Knuckles and Rooster, just, like, got a bit Eggman and well. Tails are a bit meh, but yeah. I like <laughs> the treasure hunting ones they were cool and obviously then I like the chow element because when I when it came out I was quite young the chow element was cool I don't I don't think it would work so well now because I don't think people would split the time in but yeah, yeah it'd the have time to be like a um, nice idea you know the info, like oh what I call it the mo- amoebies amoebies oh oh amiibos thank you yeah yeah amoebies that would work well <laughs> the things I think I think the way one thing I need to do with it as well is I'm glad that although although it's known they still haven't announced it I'm glad that, that it's been two years since Sonic Team made a Sonic game, so they've had longer to work on this. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it'll be a good so. one. Although, you have some good Sonic games out, it's just, they're not entirely good. Yeah. Like, they all, they, like, um, Sonic Generations, it was good, but there were some poor level design choices. Yeah. Like, the the planet, the the planet Wisp level, oh, I thought yeah. was terrible. Like, yeah. that, that ruined the last, last section of the game. <laughs> um, but the other levels were pretty good. And, you know, like, some of them were really well done. Um, and, you know, you genuinely enjoyed the classic Sonic and the modern Sonic. Yeah. It didn't feel like one of them was a weaker element to it. That's why I hate why they went to Lost World. Yeah, I don't know like, they... why is such a, I mean, a massive change Lost World there. played okay. I did enjoy what I played of it, but it had, like, seven good levels out of about 30. I was <laughs> thinking, and then they bloody screwed the pooch with bloody... Fuck, I don't mention it. No, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't. Right, oh, wait, I won't, come I, won't, I won't forget. I won't forget. <laughs> Take it back. Go back in time. <laughs> Never happened. You mean boom? You go back in time. <laughs> <laughs> why the scarf? Why the thinking? Why did they turn his arms blue? That was the I, one I thing. I didn't care about the redesigns. Like oh. I, I was like, fair enough. They redesign it. Yeah. Like you know, what's the worst thing though, Nick? Is the people who developed it. Don't say it. Uncharted. No, don't say it. That's why Sonic has a scarf. Because <laughs> Nathan Drake has a scarf. Nathan Drake, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sonic Drake. Have you, there's, um, the best thing about Sonic, though, is at the moment anyway, is have you seen their Twitter yeah, and Facebook? Games out. But there's no yeah. game their, their <laughs> Twitter and Facebook. There's disappointment at the moment because there's nothing coming out. <laughs> their, uh, their Twitter and Facebook is run by um, this this guy, basically, who's who definitely keeps up with the fan base. Yeah. Everything is just ripping the shit out of the Sonic. Like they, they did a little video uh, the other day of like a timeline of all the Sonic games, and it'd be like, oh, here's Sonic One. This is a little bit of the story, a little bit of the game. Oh, it's critically acclaimed, and so on and so on and so yeah. on. And then Sonic 06, they just had now loading underneath. <laughs> and then, um, then I love how you say the best thing about Sonic is, is the Twitter the, page. Is the Twitter. <laughs> that's because that's because at the moment it is. And then she sums up everything. <laughs> that's what. Did you see? Uh, you know, Mighty Number no. Nine came out the other day. Oh god. Did you yeah. see what say say Sonic's uh, Twitter page put up? No. Well, basically, the guy who made Mighty Number no. Nine has been um, saying has been saying that um, <laughs> he. Although the game's come out badly, it's better than nothing. And then so- the Sonic Twitter account put um, like, "Oh, congratulations on the release, Mighty Number no. Nine. Better than nothing." It's like Sega. You- I'm sorry, but you can't say that because <laughs> <laughs> be- nothing would have been better than Sonic Boom, Sonic 06, Shadow the Hedgehog, and so many other Sonic games. Uh, uh God. But uh, I think we should probably start wrapping it up. Yeah, uh, we've, uh, we've been going for quite a while now. For a while. <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've kind of covered around. everything, I think. Um, so Pixel Pixel Tavern. Yes. We've. Uh, we'll hope you hope you enjoyed this content coming up, coming out as regularly as we can. Yes. Basically. Around our full time jobs and. <laughs> yeah, with our full time jobs and our living distances from each other. <laughs> be, be fine. Be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any any closing comments? Bye, Resident Evil Seven. Play the demo. And try and figure out a bloody puzzle because Fuck I want to know, know the good ending on that bloody on that bloody thing. It's annoying me. For me, just Zelda. Can't wait. Too far away. While also only being nine months away, but it's gonna be so good. <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> it does look good. It does look great. Anything to say, Kurt? Uh, yeah, just listen to us if you want, and uh, tell other people about it, it if you like it. If you don't, then yeah, you don't. But hopefully you do. So yeah, see ya. Cool, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, bye. Yes, so bye. Yeah. See you later. That's all, that's all, that's all folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to us, guys. Cheers. Bye, Rossi, for demo. <laughs>